going on everyone welcome to a brand new ranking with the release of crimes of grindelwald this weekend i thought it'd be fun to bring one a big potter fanatic who might actually be a wizard <laughs> because i'm really much a muggle when it comes to the harry <laughs> potter universe and you can hear him laughing it's my good friend cody curtis i wanted to bring him on for this ranking because one this is gonna be a little fun we're not gonna argue hopefully and we're not gonna debate we're gonna try and keep this into the best cohesive discussion that we can and rank the harry potter universe the wizarding world universe there's 10 films to talk about before we get to there cody how you doing today you ready to rank these oh you know it zach well first of all it's always great to come on here either when it's a podcast or if it's just normal collaboration we haven't done a normal collaboration in a long time and this it might have really been great. a year already because last year we yeah. did the coco one and that was one of our last ones we ever did but yeah. it's fun to kind of just do this it's fun to do it more professionally not as laid back but we're going to be talking about the wizarding world of harry potter harry let's potter. talk about it <laughs> cody since you are my guest i want you to tell me your number 10 and i'll try to withstand myself because i might know which one it is <laughs> yeah we may or may not have talked about this my number 10 is fantastic beasts the crime of Grin the crimes of grindelwald now let me emphasis this with ever since i saw it last night i have put some thought to it and i don't hate it as much as i originally thought i i originally did like the crimes of Grindelwald. there is some very fun stuff in it for one thing as far as world building is concerned stephanie meyer it, or not stephanie meyer screw that uh jk rowling stephanie is, meyer we're gonna not, talk about twilight now <laughs> no 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 but but jk rowling as far as world building is concerned there are not a lot of people who write screenplays who can do it well there are some problems I, a major problems I have with the script, but as far as world building is concerned, I don't have a problem with that. She knows this world. She knows the characters. That was great. Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and, uh, and Jude Law as young Dumbledore. Those were fantastic. I love Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander. It's just, as far as storytelling is concerned, it was just an overall mess for me. I was very bored and there were just way too many subplots. You know, okay, so like, I'll hold my thoughts back for it in a little bit. Um, okay. Again, this is a very nice discussion. So if you guys have different thoughts on any of these films on different rankings, we both want to hear it down below in the comments. We're definitely going to be yeah. talking with you guys down there. But um, I'm going to save my thoughts for a little bit later and just get to my number 10. My number 10 is Chamber of Secrets. Okay. I find this I film to be way too long. Um, it's the longest film in the franchise. I Definitely not bad. I think it's good and it's fun to watch. Not, like, Don't mm. get me wrong at all with that, but I find one of my biggest mm. issues with it is the film's just it's the one film that they tried to get put too much of the stuff in from the books that that's just one of my biggest issues mm -hmm. i think it still holds up i think it's still fun to see where it goes within the whole world but overall could have been better chamber of secrets is one of those that i, I also think it's down there because this is the film i rewatched the most as a child and i think i'm just sick of it <laughs> Well, I can understand that. I mean, there are certain, I'll get to my thoughts on Chamber of Secrets in a little bit, but I can understand why. I mean, it is the longest. I mean, it's almost both Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. They're, they're almost three hours long, both of them. And Chamber of Secrets is closer to that mark. And there's just some stuff they could have definitely cut out of it. But I'd say let's continue. No yeah. So what's your number nine? <laughs> so number nine for me. <laughs> number nine for me is fantastic beasts oh come on so no look i once again like you said i can have fun with pretty much all these movies and this is this is where i start to say that every movie after this point on this list including this one i don't think is a bad movie fantastic beasts i think is a very I think it's a very well-told movie. It's just some of the pacing issues I had issues with, but the introduction of Newt Scamander, Queenie, and all the other characters, Tina, all the other characters we get introduced to, it was very good world building in a new story that nobody had known about. And this script, in my opinion, is just much stronger than the one we got with when it comes to the crimes of Grindelwald. So Fantastic Beasts, number nine. It's not a terrible movie. It's not even a bad movie. It's a fun, enjoyable adventure. All right. So, again, my number nine is Order of the Phoenix. And oh, listen, listen. I have it this low because I absolutely hate Umbridge. I hate her character. And that's great thanks to the writing and the character, but... 
I hate yeah. her character. And <laughs> Order of the Phoenix is fine. It, it's fine for me. It's one of the films that, honestly, when I'm rewatching them, it's the one film I could care less to watch. I don't know why. I don't know why it is. I just have never gravitated to this movie. I find it to be super weak. And I'm sure Potter fans are freaking out, but I find the book to be so much more interesting than the movie. And I just, it's cool seeing Harry teach these kids and it's cool seeing like their, their world building within this. But again, I just, I find the book to be so much better on this part than the movie. And the movie's again, good. I just don't care to watch it. Yeah, I, I can completely agree. And this is when the trolls come in and they're like, you shouldn't be comparing the book to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. But let me, let me say this. Oh my god, it's Umbridge. Look at that pink outfit. She's so cute. <laughs> no. You're right. No. And you know, you know, there there's the outfit. In the... <laughs> anyway. Uh, I What's your under... number? What's your number eight, man? Let's just skip over this. My number eight is Deathly Hallows Part One. Like okay. I can I'll... I can I just say this? My number eight is also Deathly Hallows Part One. Okay, then let, let's get into it. The, my biggest problem with this film, very much like with Fantastic Beasts, is the pacing. The pacing of Deathly Hallows Part 1 is, is deathly it, painful. Yeah, it's <laughs> deathly painful. But once again, it's not a terrible movie. It is a very, very well done film. It's just the pacing inside of the film is when, when the majority of the movie is camping you gotta yeah. make it interesting in some way and unfortunately i don't think they really succeeded but david yates is the director the whole team behind it it was great and also the performances by everybody this is the point they're great what can we say all the performances by everybody in all of the harry potter films they're always on top of where they need to be it's great yeah i i agree with you on that part um i think the the reason it's higher up on my list and not more at the bottom though to be completely honest is because of that one scene between harry and hermione the dancing scene it yeah. is the one scene that always sticks out and then i mean dobby's death uh, <laughs> i mean the whole ending is like insane but it's a film that i definitely feel like you needed a first part but I think this is one of the things where, okay, you need to try to change some stuff. There is needed essential stuff. When you, If you watch this film and the second film back to back, great, perfect together. But as a standalone film, it's not that interesting. And yeah. in fact, it's kind of boring. Like, have you ever heard someone be like, let's watch Deathly Hollows? Part one, not part two. <laughs> part no. one. Like, I could, I could easily skip over this, go watch part two and be completely fine. But it's better as a whole. And I really like Deathly Hallows. I, I, I like Deathly Hallows Part 1. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's fine. It's good. But I think that Harry and Hermione scene really benefit and push it up a little echelon. It's really much the last calm before the storm. Before the yeah. that, That's the best way to explain it. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I would say is if we weren't doing the individual films, if I could put Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Deathly Hallows Part 2 and say that was one movie, I would say that that, without a doubt, is my favorite film in the Harry Potter franchise. Because if you put those two parts together, you have even though people complained about the setup and everything else, you have the setup in Part 1, to, to Calm Before the Storm, everything we're getting, and then everything hits the fan in Part 2. So put those together... And that would be my favorite Harry Potter movie. But since we're doing singulars, let's just move on. Yeah. But, let's move on to number seven. What's your number seven? Number seven for me is the chamber of secrets. Okay. Um, it's like I said, this film, I agree with you where it does feel like they were trying to cram too much into one film. The chamber of secrets once again, my biggest problems when it comes to the Harry Potter films, for the most part, is always the pacing. And the pacing in Chamber of Secrets, because they tried to put so much into it, the pacing is brought down. All the Chamber of Secrets stuff is really cool. Learning about the Basilisk and Aragog and the spiders and all just phenomenal world building. Once again, because the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter story, the world building is always on. It's incredible through and through, but there are those issues there. Although I will say that Chamber of Secrets, when I was a young child, this is the film that gave me nightmares the most. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with you on that one. Um, but my number seven is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This right. is a movie that when I walked out of, I was so let down, uh, to be completely honest. And it, yeah. for a long time, it was my least favorite. And then as I've come around, I rewatched it a couple days ago because of Crimes of Grindelwald, and I like it more. 
Um, I knew what I was watching this time. And the thing about this film is, and I think is, we'll get, when I say where Crimes of Grindelwald is my list, we'll talk about why I think Fantastic Beasts has one great thing about it is that it is a standalone adventure. If this is where the film ended, that would be it. Like straight up, that would be it. If they never made a sequel, it would be fine. It would be a definitive story um, top to bottom. Um, there would be some things you'd still want a little bit more, but I thought it was nice introducing us to these new characters. A uh, new is great. Um, Queenie is the most underrated character in the whole yeah. franchise right now. I love Queenie. I agree um, with that. Colin Farrell was great. Everyone's good in here. And it just built up the lore more. But I mean, the easiest, the easily the best part about Fantastic Beasts isn't just all the creatures and getting to learn more about them. And not just the interactions. No, it's the damn Nifflers. Because I want myself yeah. a little Niffler. I want my little Nifflers. <laughs> um, Nifflers are adorable. They steal the whole movie. And I think Fantastic Beasts is one of those films that goes between dark and light, but more lighthearted. And it kind of takes us back to the earlier days of Harry Potter and just having a fun adventure. I Holy smokes. I, I agree with you on that, particularly the Nifflers. I agree with you on that one because they're. I want one. In a fact, I, I kind of wish Newt Scamander was a real person so I could just go to his suitcase and visit him there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic Beast, it's a really, it's a really enjoyable movie. Yeah, for but, sure. But what is your number six, man? Let's get to well, there. Before I get to my number six, I will say all us saying that these are fun movies after this point is going to be a bit of a cliche because every film after this point. <laughs> Every film was good. Let's be honest. So yeah, yeah. I mean, all these films are good. There's not a bad one necessarily, in yeah. my opinion. Maybe you yeah. disagree with me because of Crimes of Grindelwald, but you yeah. know what I mean. Like they're all good. Yeah. So my number six is Half Blood Prince. Oh yeah. Half Blood, Half Blood Prince for me. I thoroughly enjoy the movie, but this is where I am going to have to compare it to the book. The book's is because better. the book is better. The the book is so much better, and there is one big reason for it. It's the villain dynamic that we get. It's all of the information about Tom Riddle and and who he was and where he comes from and his family, all of that stuff. All the interesting and amazing information we got about Lord Voldemort, about his past, about his family's past. That was it's the reason why Half Blood Prince is my favorite book in the entire in the entire series is because of how they establish not just who Voldemort is but who he was and his family. And Half Blood Prince, I do think it's a great movie. The last act of Half Blood Prince in particular is phenomenal. But the pacing once again is very slow. And <laughs> And all the romance stuff that happened, the way they portrayed it in the film, I thought it was a little bit too much of a high school cliche, like high school musical cliche. And it just, for me, it was just bad. But uh, Zach, what's your number six? I I want to scream at you right now, but I'll wait. Um, my number six is Sorcerer Stone. I find this film really good, but does not hold up at all. I, I It is not hold up. It is, again, long and sluggish. And I think, again, it's at my number six. And it I almost put it lower, but it's a film I still enjoy watching. But it's a film I watched so many times as a child that it's just ingrained into my head. And <laughs> I think it just builds it up. And everyone does a fine performance, but it's just our introduction in the magical world. So I have to kind of put it in the middle because it's that introduction to the Harry Potter, to the wizarding world. And... It's just great. It's a great coming of age story. That that's what I can say about it. It's Harry, the whole story is a coming of age story for Harry of er, Harry becoming an adult in a sense. But I think Sorcerer Stones really nailed like the nail really well in establishing this world, and it built a great foundation for the rest of the world. Okay, I can agree with that. Although I kind of want to scream because of how low it is, but we'll we'll uh, we'll keep going. We'll keep going, but uh. Number Holy five, God. man. Number five. I, Top five I right did, now. I did not even realize how ironic this is till right now. My number five is Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> my, number, my number five is Order of the Phoenix. We all know uh, someone like Umbridge here. Uh, I love, love this movie. And by love, I mean, I think it's very, very good. 
I think Once it's underrated. Again, I think people think it's underrated. And I, I just think it's overrated. I do, I do not agree. I think it's a bit overrated, but I still had a lot of fun. Umbridge, as far as just an embodiment of pure evil, it's 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 great. Her representation was was fantastic. It was true to the character from the book that I love so much. And the movie as a whole, I thought it was handled extremely well, particularly all of the flashback scenes, all of the the connection that Harry has with Voldemort. And in my opinion, out of all of the Harry Potter films, this for me is, is one of the best performances as Potter that Daniel Radcliffe gave. And once again, the last act of Order of the Phoenix is is phenomenal. The death of Sirius Black is um it's one of the most emotional scenes in in the entire series, in my personal opinion. But yeah. that's really hard for me to quantify because I think I cry at the end of almost every single one of these darn films. So yeah, man, I I you know what? Sirius Black is my favorite character in all it's these very movies. Old, so man. Yeah, it's my favorite character, and that's really why Order of the Phoenix, like, in a sense, like, works for me. And people need to understand that, like, no matter how low these are on our list, we still like these movies. Like, we still yeah. enjoy these movies. So, Order of the Phoenix is, even though it's my number nine, I totally get why you like it. Um, yeah. Again, it's just never spoken to me, but there are great performances. And my number five in Haps is Goblet of Fire, which really started that adulthood steps for... Daniel Radcliffe's character, Harry Potter. Um, Goblet of Fire is, is, for me, the most fun. All the different trials yeah. and elements. It's, for me, the most rewatchable Harry Potter film. It's the fastest moving Harry Potter film. And it's probably the one I've actually seen the most. But it's one of those ones that still holds up today. It's still beautiful to look at. And it's just unique. You know, like, I just really like Goblet of Fire. And... Again, if you're looking at the books, it's I, the book's still better, but I think they got a lot nailed down into this universe. And again, it furthers this. And I mean, the ending in that maze is one of the most intense scenes in any of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, I absolutely a goblet of fire. I, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because it's coming up pretty soon. But Goblet of Fire is a it's a phenomenal movie. It's a great transition point in the whole Harry Potter saga when Harry is becoming. And this is actually this is the film where things started getting very, very dark for the mm -hmm. Harry Potter franchise. And that it, it, I mean, it's a great point. It's a great it's a great film based off of a phenomenal book. I agree, man. I agree. So uh, what is your number four? My number four. <laughs> My number four is goblet of fire <laughs> but nice i i have to reiterate everything you said the whole mood the transition everything it's 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 great but i would say the best part of the movie the everything up to the last third of the movie is really really fun but the introduction of rafe of rafe finds as lord voldemort is it's one of those it's one of those scenes that will be burned into my brain and I think might be a very iconic scene in cinematic history because Rafe Fiennes as Lord Voldemort is he's up there with Darth Vader as far as being one of the greatest villains ever put the screen. I mean, you have wizarding Hitler thrown up onto the screen and all of his supporters and it was just so well established and so well put together and just, and of course, David Tennant is Barty Crouch Jr. He doesn't have a lot of screen time, but the screen time he does have is is really really great. Goblet yeah, of Fire, great. And Ralph Fiennes playing Voldemort is like one of the best choices you could ever have for a film. Yeah, one hundred percent. So Zach, what is your uh, what's your number four? Crimes of Grindelwald. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is my number four. I find Crimes of Grindelwald to be underrated to the max. Um, I, I thought like, okay, I'll walk out of the film and I'll give it a couple, I'll give it a day or two and I'll sit on it and I'll be like, oh yeah, it was fine. It's not as much as I liked it walking out, but 
I walked out and I told you this this morning. I feel like this film's getting a lot of hate and it is a setup movie. This is very much like, I don't know how friends of this universe in my opinion. And I don't think this film is bad. There is one or two things I think this film does not do good. And it's one too many subplots. Way too many subplots. There's a couple characters that you could have just snipped out and did not need full things in there. Maybe you could have gone into it in a different movie and stuff. Because there's like, what, five more movies still? And I think Crimes of Grindelwald should have focused on Dumbledore, Grindelwald, uh, Newt, uh, Tina, and the, the original crew. I think Lita's stuff was a little bit... It was needed, but at the same time wasn't. And then I don't even remember the other guy's name. Her estranged brother. Uh, I don't even remember what his name was. But I, I felt like he just cut out the film completely. They did not need to be in this movie at all. There's a lot of good elements to Crimes of Grindelwald. It just kills me and that I need to see what the next film in this Fantastic Beast franchise is. I'm looking forward to it. But man, I, I get the hate. I just, Dumbledore, come on, come on. Hot Dumbledore. But uh, yeah, it's excellent. I loved it. Like, I, I did not like Crimes of Grindelwald. That's no secret. We discussed it right at the beginning of this. And honestly, look, I think the movie's a piping hot mess, but I can understand why you would enjoy it. There are some very enjoyable enjoyable elements inside of Crimes of Grindelwald. And I understand that people are giving Johnny Depp a lot of hate for his performance and saying that he's one of the weaker elements in the film. For me, he was one of the strongest elements in the film because for... For me, seeing Johnny Depp actually give a great performance, which he did, I thought he worked for exactly what they were going for. And plus, the movie is the movie is very much a setup film for what's going on down the road. Very much so, but that's where we're three. Number three. Yep. And my number three is the Sorcerer's Stone. I knew it. <laughs> I absolutely absolutely love the sorcerer stone is it dated yes the quidditch matches do not look very good at all i could go make the same thing in my yard running around with a broomstick to be honest (laughs) it's true you could but i i absolutely love this movie for the nostalgia for what it means to me i mean i watched this movie so much as a kid that it really made an impact on me and these last three are the Harry Potter films that I watch the most out of. The first one, the first one could probably be tied with my my number one, to be honest. I love Sorcerer's Stone. The fact is the world building, establishing this, learning. I mean, as far as a cast is concerned, you have some of the best actors of the time period of the time uh in this movie. I mean, Alan Rickman, uh, Rick, um, Alan Rickman, Maggie Smith, Richard Harris. I mean, you have so many great performances. Oh, uh, Rupert. Uh, dang it. Guy, guy who plays Ron. He plays Ron. Oh, not, not. I'm thinking the guy who plays Hagrid. Like, oh, just, yeah, Hagrid. <laughs> Robbie Coltrane. That's the guy's name. I, as a whole, I love this movie to pieces. It means so much to me. And it, I mean, it's probably part of the reason why I am the person I am today. So what's your hey, you know what, man? Like, I cannot, well, not film is good. It's, it's good. I like it. But my number three is Deathly Hollows Part Two. <laughs> the, one of the best conclusions to a series ever made. And that is being 100% complete. Every time I rewatch these films, I marathon it. And when you get to this last film, it's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, makes you cry every time. Um, I, I think the film's great. I, I have nothing else to say about Deathly Hallows Part 2. I think it's fantastic. All right. Sounds great. Uh, oh, no. If this goes the way, I think. Yeah, I think we've all I... know what our number one is. <laughs> so what's your number, th- what's your number two? Number two for me is Deathly Hallows Part Two. Yep. So our number one's the same. <laughs> yep. I I love it. I absolutely love Deathly Hallows Part Two. It's not only a really, really great, phenomenal, exciting movie. It's also the film that ended the Harry Potter's arc and his story perfectly. This is, like I said, it's one of the films in the Harry Potter universe I watch the most. I cry every single time I watch it. The emotions are just so phenomenally strong. And I can only imagine, I 
wish I had the feeling of going back into the theater, watching this movie for the first time. Cause seeing it on the big screen for the, for the first time, it was phenomenal. And it's one of the films that it broke. I believe it broke a couple box office records for a film of its kind. It's at one the of the time, large yeah, at, probably at the time it did, but I mean, Avengers and all those have like smashed these now. Yeah, I know it's like number six or seven now, but still one of the biggest openings at the time, as far as box office is concerned and deathly Hallows part two is just such a great movie. So what's your number two, Zach? My number two is half blood Prince. I think this is the most underrated film in the whole Harry Potter franchise. It's the one film that I was not looking forward to watching. Um, I will totally admit though, there are faults with it within the book and the, that I think the film should have been longer. This is one of the Harry Potter films that should have been longer to add more of the depths. That whole cave scene, it's random. Like, it, the book if you haven't read the book you're not un gonna really under fully understand that scene but just i found it so complex and learning harry's relationship with dumbledore and getting that relationship just a bit more before that horrible ending when you just cry and lose all hope that all <laughs> thing is gone it's the one film then this series that every time i get to I love to marinate on that shit. I love to put that thing over a rotisserie and just fucking <laughs> turn it. I <laughs> love Half-Blood Prince. I think it's an excellent movie. I, I think it's one of the best Harry Potter films. It's the most underrated. I get people's lack of it. I understand the book is better, but seriously, I don't know what it is. I love this movie, though. I love it. Not going to argue with that. Once again, none of the Harry Potter films are bad. And I enjoy, I mean, if someone told me that we were going to sit down and watch Half-Blood Prince, I'd be like, okay, put it on. Let's watch it. I mean, I have problems with how they establish the friendship dynamics and the whole, and by friendships, I mean the relationship aspect of Half-Blood Prince. Like I thought it uh, allowed for some levity and some laughs, but I also think it could have easily been taken out and we could have focused more on the Voldemort stuff. And that cave scene, we get to the emotional ending. It's all it's all great. But Zach, yeah, it all builds up. But we all know what our number one is. The one film I think almost every person will rule as being one of the best Harry Potter films. <sighs> Cody, I'll let you say it. Well, I was going to say it. However, since this is like the fourth or fifth thing that we have tied when it comes to our number one, Five, four, three, four, three, two, two one. one. Prisoner, Prisoner of Azkaban. Man, yep. It's amazing. Uh, it I is. don't know what else to say about this film. It's easily the most haunting film. It's the most horrific film. This this is the film that gave me nightmares as a child. Um, <laughs> it introduces us more into Harry's backstory. It introduces us more to the characters. You get to meet Lupin. You get to meet Sirius Black. You, you get, really the, the the Death Eater scenes in here are insanely crazy, and it it's just. It's one of the films that, as a film, this is the best made Harry Potter film. I would love to see Karan come back and direct a Fantastic Beast film. I think yeah. if he would have directed Crimes of Grindelwald, the Crimes of Grindelwald would have ended up being my favorite Harry Potter film. <laughs> yeah. I just think Karan is one of the most underrated directors in Hollywood, and I think Azkaban is easily the best Harry Potter film. It brings up the stakes. This is really the first step into adulthood for Harry. And it just... Man, it, it's like shit hit the fan in this movie. <laughs> no, I Alfonso Cuaron. The great thing about it is that he manages to mix, he manages to mix humor, darkness in a movie that is just so much fun to watch and just so the the world building gets bigger, the stakes go higher. Harry as a person is growing, and we get introduced to one of the greatest, uh, two of the greatest characters in Harry Potter history. We get Sirius Black played by Gary Oldman, and then we get Professor Lupin, and then we get Timothy Spaulding as Peter Pettigrew. We get some great characters, and once again, Gary Oldman was perfect casting as, as Sirius Black, and the gentleman they got to play Lupin, forgetting his name right now, Lupin was my favorite professor, one of my favorite characters in the books. And Lupin's one of, ultimately one of my favorite characters within the movies. And this movie proves it to wise because this is one of the only teachers that actually feels like he's a father to Harry besides Sirius Black. Sirius Black's kind of like that cool collected uncle that you, that you don't mind hanging around with. But Lupin is, 
he's like a father figure to Harry, and it was great to see. Yeah, I mean, the whole relationships that you learn in this film are wonderful, and that's why Azkaban's our number one. So, again, before we end this video, let's go through our rankings. I'll start with mine, then you'll say yours. Uh, my number 10 is Chamber of Secrets. Number 9 is Order of the Phoenix. 8 is Deathly Hallows Part 1. 7 is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. 6 is uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, 5 is Goblet of Fire. 4 is Crimes of Grindelwald. 3 is Deathly Hallows Part 2. Number 2 is the Half-Blood Prince. And number 1 is Prisoner of Azkaban. And Cody, what is your list? All right, my list is number 10 is Crimes of Grindelwald. Number nine is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Number eight is Deathly Hallows Part One. Number seven is Half Blood Prince. Number six is Chamber of Secrets. Or, no, wait, that's what you're. Sorry, sorry, that's what you're on. Did I? What the? Just restart so I can cut it. Okay, sounds great. Oh. Number 10 is Crimes of Grindelwald. Number 9 is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Number 8 is Deathly Hallows Part 1. Number 7 is Chamber of Secrets. Number 6 is Half-Blood Prince. Number 5, Order of the Phoenix. Number 4 is Goblet of Fire. Number 3 is the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone if you're from England. Number 2 is Deathly Hallows Part 2. And number 1 is Prisoner of Azkaban. Awesome. So guys, that is our ranking for all the Harry Potter films, or if you want to see the Wizarding World, whatever you prefer. Let's talk about it down below. What is your ranking of the Harry Potter franchise? Let's talk about it. What do you think of Crime of Grindelwald? Do you think it was absolute garbage, or were you on Cody's side, or my side? Let's talk about it down below. That's where we're going to talk about it. Thank you guys again so much for watching this. If you guys are new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and make sure to go find Cody. And Cody, where can they find you at? All right, everybody. Well, where you can find me, of course, here with Zach doing collaborations and podcasts and all kinds of stuff on a semi-regular basis. And if you want to find me on YouTube, just go to the YouTube search bar. Search Cody Curtis. You'll find me there. If you want to find me on social media, just I'm not really on Facebook anymore. But if you want to find me on Twitter, Instagram, Stardust, Movie Reactionary app, or pretty much any other social media besides Facebook, look underscore Cody underscore Curtis or just Cody Curtis. And if you want to find me outside of that, just go to WMPG.org. You'll be able to find a couple of podcasts that I do with them. One is about helping college students. The other one is talking about films that come out during the weekend. And then I do some writing for the school's paper. And all you got to do is look up www.usmfreepress.org. You'll be able to find my work there. Come and show us some support. It'll be great. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys. Well, guys, that is our ranking again. That is Cody. Go hit, hit up all those links. Check them out down there. Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. Make sure to go check out Sandwich on Films also down below because right down there you guys can get into advanced movie scenes and check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. But I'm going to go get on my little Nimbus 2000 and fly away. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching and stay classy. <laughs>